In this tutorial, I want to show you how we can display XY data in GIS where the data already comes with latitude and longitude coordinates provided, um, not just addresses. And to um, illustrate that, I'm going to use data from the EPA's Toxics Release Inventory, which is a database of facilities that report to the EPA on the amount of pollution that they're emitting into the air or into the ground or shipping off site. So, what we'll do is we'll go to a browser, I use Chrome, um, and we'll Google PRI Explorer, which is the sort of search engine for the Toxics Release Explorer, and we'll click on that first link. And this takes us to the chemical report, but we're actually going to get a facility report, um, data on all the facilities. We want the year of data to match our census data, so we'll select 2000. Geographic location, we're going to set to the state of Colorado. Um, it's obviously going to be more data than we need, um, given that we're only interested in the Denver metro area, but we'll be able to narrow those out once we get the data into GIS. Uh, we'll go ahead and leave this as all chemicals and all industries, but we do want longitude and latitude reported, and we're going to get rid of some of the information, the details, and just leave off-site, on-site, and combined disposal um, or pollution. So we'll go ahead and generate report. You can see facilities are reported, latitude, longitude, and the pounds of emissions. Um, as I scroll down, you'll see there's an initial full listing of all the facilities in Colorado. And then there's a subset of those, this is a replication of some of those, that emit dioxins into the ground or air, which are cancer-causing. Uh, if we scroll a little further, we can see the download button and go ahead and download. Once that is downloaded, we can open it up. And now we need to clean this data set up. And it's, this is actually a fairly um, extensive cleaning job, so uh, bear with me. The first thing we want to do is get rid of that top row. We don't need that information and we can get rid of the first column. We don't need row numbers, so we'll delete that. And we want to change these, we'll see if the names of these variables, facilities fine, latitude, longitude are fine. This is ugly, spaces and dashes, we want to get rid of those. So I'll call this tote on, tab over, tote off, and then tote on off. And now we can get rid of some of these other rows. And the other thing we want to do is get rid of that duplication of some of these facilities. We're not interested in, for this project on looking at DACs and releasing subsets. So we're just going to get rid of everything from the main, the very last facility in that full listing down. So we don't need total rows or anything like that. So anything with total on down we'll get rid of. And delete. Scroll back up. A few other things. You'll notice that some of our numbers are so large they're not fitting into our columns because they're not wide enough. So you just put your cursor between these columns and double click, they'll expand to the fullest extent necessary. We also want to get rid of these NAs and any cells that just have periods in them. And we also want to just go ahead and get rid of the columns, we don't need those as well. So we'll highlight these columns, right click, format those cells as numbers, two decimal places is fine, and hit OK. So now we got rid of the commas. Let's go ahead and get rid of the NAs. We'll just do the replace here, and A, and replace with zeros. Hit OK. Now, unfortunately, I wish I could just go in and replace those periods with zeros, but the problem is with this particular data that it replaces these periods with zeros and, and sort of messes with our data. So we'll just have to do that manually. I'll go through. There's only a few of these where we have um, just periods, single periods. And I think there's one more. That looks like it. Okay, so those columns are all well formatted. Uh, the other thing you want to make sure you don't have, and the only reason um, we're keeping this data is we want to be able to size our plot points by the amount of pollution. If you're not interested in that, if you're just um, you know, plotting McDonald's, for example, you don't need to worry about this. But if you want to be able to size those plot points by some value, you want to make sure that that first value is not zero. GIS has an issue with that, I'm not sure why. So I'm just going to insert a row here and get 
uh, replace it with uh, one of my columns that actually has data in all of those cells. Now the other crucial thing to do is make sure that your latitude and longitude are formatted as numbers with three decimal places. Now they may appear that they are, but you always want to double check. So highlight those, format cells, numbers with three decimal places. And that guarantees that GIS can locate their um, precise location. Um, if they don't have three decimal places, um, the data isn't precise enough. And finally, we want to make sure that the facility information is fully exposed. So we'll just double click there and expose all of that. And we can go ahead and rename this. And we'll just call it uh, facilities here. And we'll do a file save as. And go ahead and save it to where all of your data is being saved, wherever your file folder is. And we want to save it as a 9703 workbook. And I'm going to call it Colorado Facilities. Save. And then go ahead and close that out. We need it closed before GIS can bring it in. And we'll add that in. We'll go and look for there's Colorado Facilities. We don't want the Excel file. We want the sheet inside. And again, if I open it, you'll see what it looks like. There's facility. Everything looks good. Now we'll right click. And instead of geocode addresses, we have XY data. So we'll display XY data. And it's already reading longitude and latitude already. Um, it has a geographic coordinate system that it wants to use, but I prefer a different one. So we'll go to Edit, Select, Geographic Coordinate Systems, World, and then the last one, WGS 1984. And hit OK. Again, that was just Edit, Select, Geographic Coordinate Systems, World, and the last one there and hit OK, and hit OK. And what you'll notice is that it plotted facilities all across the state of Colorado. And what we'll want to be able to do is use GIS to select just those that fall in our particular urban boundary here of census tracts. Um, before we do that though, this selection menu, selecting by location, requires that this data be in shapefile format, and it currently isn't. It's in an event format. To turn these events into a shapefile, it's pretty simple. You just export it on itself. You right-click, Data, and Export Data. And we'll go ahead and just call these Facilities. And hit OK. And we'll add them in. And we can get rid of the old ingredients, get rid of the events and the actual table of data. Now we can use the Selection menu, Select by Location. We're going to select features from facilities for the entire state of Colorado that have their centroid in whatever boundary we're using. In this case, we're using Denver Tracks, and we'll hit OK. So you can see how it's highlighted those particular facilities. And if I open up the attribute table, you can see which rows of data it's highlighted. Now we'll just go ahead and export those particular facilities out of the larger facilities data layer. So we've highlighted facilities. We'll export them out of facilities. And we'll call these then facilities. And hit OK. And we'll get rid of the old one. And there we're left with just the facilities in the Denver metro area that we're interested in. Now just like census data, we might want to eventually join this data into a single data set. Um, Right now, the census data is in the shapefile here, and our EPA-listed facilities are here. So to join them, we always join to our primary data set, which are our census tracts. And we'll right-click there, Joins and Relates, Join, not from another table, but from data based on, another, based on their spatial location. It's already reading our facility data, and we're going to sum that up. So what it's going to do is it's going to count up the number of facilities in each census tract and the pounds of pollution and provide new variables. Um, a lot of those census tracts will just be zero um, because there's no facilities, but that's fine. So I usually just call this shape, new shape file that's being created spat join for spatial join. And we'll hit OK. And it's created a new shape file. And if I right click and open up the attribute table, each one of these is a census tract in that area. And here's my census data that I joined. 
and then here is a new count underscore variable which is the number of facilities in each census tract obviously most are zero here's one with five it also sums the latitude and longitude which is irrelevant but here we have the total on-site off-site and total on off so uh, we have that data that we can start to um, format our maps by so now I can actually get rid of my old Denver tracks that only had the census and I can remove that and then if I click on this tab over here I'm able to change the order of these things and I do want to leave the data this even though I have the facility data now merged into a single data set I leave it in the layer window by itself so that I can um, visualize it on the map um, so that's how you put data together um, XY data that comes in with coordinates already provided um, and how you can display it and then spatially join it to underlying census tracts or counties or whatever you're working with. Um, if you do create a single unified data set like this and you want to be able to work with it in a program like Stata, what you do is you'd open up the attribute table and go ahead and export it. And it'll export as a DBF file, a DBase file. And we can just go ahead and call this. I work with it in Stata, so I call it Stata Data. And save it to where you're saving all your folders and hit OK. We do not need to add it to the map. We just want to create it and leave it in our folder for later. So that's how you do XY data.